Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. In this video, I'm going to go through a question from the May June 2016 Pure Mathematics P1 uh, Cambridge um, 9709 variant, paper one, variant three. And this is a question which is about functions. It's question number six, also for my end of topic worksheet number four on functions. And um, here we are told about function f such that f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 for x is greater than or equal to 0. So we know f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 for the values of x which are greater than or equal to 0. That's the domain of this function. All right, the function g is such that g of x is equal to ax squared plus b for the domain x is less than or equal to q. All right, it says where a... B and Q are constants. The function fg, which is a composite function of g inside f, is such that f of gx, f of gx, is equal to 6x squared minus 21, and the domain of that is for x values less than or equal to Q. So we've got to find the values of a and b. So basically, the result of substituting g of x inside function f is equal to this. So when I put function g of x inside function f, what comes out is 6x squared minus 21. So that means g of x, which is ax squared plus b, going into function f gives us 6x squared minus 21. And what we can do now is we can actually put this inside the function. Basically, we got to replace the x with ax squared plus b in this function. So I'll just do that now. So I'll have two times. Instead of x, I'm going to put ax squared plus b. Then I'll have plus 3 equals 6x squared minus 21. So I can now simplify this a little bit by expanding this bracket. So 2ax squared plus 2b plus 3 equals 6x squared minus 21. So what we can do here in order for us to find a and b is simply just compare the coefficients of x squared. So if we think about the x squared coefficients, the x squared coefficients, if you look at the x squared coefficients on this side, you have 2a x squared, 2a x squared. On this side, you have 6x squared. That means because these are the same, that means 2a must be equal to 6. Okay, if 2a is equal to 6, that means a must be equal to 3. So we found the value of a. And if we compare the, co the constants, 2b plus 3 is a constant on this side. So we're going to compare the constants on both sides of the equation. So we have, we can say this is an identity really. So 2b plus 3 is equal to negative 21. So we can say 2b is equal to negative 24 if you subtract 3 from both sides. So b is equal to negative 12 when you divide both sides by 2. So now we know a is 3 and b is negative 12. So that's the answer to part 1 of this question. Okay, so there's part 1. Then it says, find the greatest possible value of Q. So let's see what we have here. We have F of X is equal to, uh, we know that's equal to 2X plus 3. And X is greater than or equal to 0. We know that G of X, now we know the values of A and B and G now. So G of X is going to be um, AX squared plus B. So AX squared plus B means 3X squared minus 12 for x is less than or equal to q, and they've told us that f g of x is such that is equal to 6x squared minus 21, such that x is less than or equal to q. All right, so we've got to find the greatest possible value of q. All right, now, for the composite function f of g x to exist, what, what we must have is we must have that the output of g the output of the inner function must be fully contained with the, within the input of the outer function. Because when you have a composite function, the x, and whatever's in here, goes into the function g. So that must go into the function g. And whatever comes out function g must go into function f. Okay, now what goes into function f must fit inside function f. So whatever comes out of g of x, it must be such that it's greater than or equal to zero for it to go into f of x. All right. If it's if if it's greater than or equal to zero, 
then it will go into um, f of x. Okay, so the output of g of x must be greater than or equal to the zero. Otherwise, it won't be able to go into the function f because the function f can only take anything which is greater than or equal to zero. So we've got to find the values of x such that 3x squared minus 12 must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, if there's any values, okay, um, for which this uh, will give you any, if there's any negative values for this, okay, then basically we cannot accept them inside this function. All right, so the greatest value of Q should be the value of Q such that no negative values can go inside this function. There can be no negative values that can fit inside here. That's going to be the greatest value of Q. So we need to solve this inequality. Now we can divide both sides by 3, in which case you get x squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. So let me find the, what's it called, the, the, um, the critical values when x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. We can solve this in two ways. One is by completing the square. We have x plus 2 and x minus 2 is equal to 0. So x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. So if we were to draw a little sketch of this quadratic inequality and find the values of x for which this inequality is true, we can see that this is a smiley face. Okay, it's going to go through minus 2 and plus 2. It's going to be like this. Okay, so we can see that it's equal 0 at minus 2 and plus 2. And it's greater than 0 when x is less than negative 2 in this region here. When x is less than negative 2 and when x is greater than 2. Okay, that, those are the values of x for which it will be when x is less than negative, less than or equal to negative 2 and x is greater than or equal to 2, that's when it's going to be 0 or positive. It has to be greater than or equal to 0. So the largest value that this can be is going to be negative 2. All right, because if it goes bigger than negative 2, you're going to have some negative values. Okay, so the domain for this, for which all of the values, all of the outputs of this will be positive, are when x is less than or equal to negative 2. So when x is less than or equal to negative 2, then this fits completely inside, um, you know, this, this will be able to go inside that function. Okay, because the output of g of x has to be positive to go into function f, and when x values are greater than negative 2, then it will be able to go inside that function. Okay, if you have any values of x which are like greater than negative 2, this will be negative, and any negative values are not in the domain of fun function f. The whole of the output of function g must fit into the input of function f. So when x is less than negative 2, the output of function g will satisfy this. Okay, the output of function g will be greater than or equal to 0 when x is less than negative 2. Okay, if x goes higher than that, as I, as I just mentioned, if x goes negative 1 and whatever, in those areas here, these, these areas, the output of function um, g will be a negative output which doesn't fit in function f. So therefore, for this to be true, Okay, then we know that, you know, that Q must be equal to negative 2. So Q is equal to negative 2 is our answer for this part of the question. Okay, so I hope that was clear. All right, so it's, um, you know, that's one of those type of questions where some students have issues with, but it's really not, not that difficult. For a composite function to exist, okay, in this case we know that it does exist because they told us it exists, that, that means that the the inner function must fit completely within the outer function. If the outer function can only take positive values, then what can um, the inner value, the inner function, it cannot put anything into, into it which will give an output which doesn't fit into this input. All right, so the input for function g must be such that it fits, the output of g fits into f, and so that's what, what that, that we have to put here for, for q. q is you know, x must be less than or equal to negative 2. That means q is equal to negative 2. All right, so that, I think, completes this whole question. No, it doesn't, actually. There's another part to, part to this question. There's part 3. It says, now it is given that q equals negative 3. Find the range of fg of x. And then it says, find an expression for the inverse 
of f g of x. This is from some other question. Let me just get rid of that. Find, find expression for the inverse of f g of x and say, okay, so let's do number part three now. It says it's now given that q is equal to negative three. All right, so they've, they've now given us the scenario where q is equal to negative three. We know that x uh, q b equals negative two is the is a maximum value that q can be for this to have an, a composite function. This is fine for it to have a composite function. This will give us a positive output for g, which will fit into f. <clears throat> so now we want to find the range of f of g of x. Okay, so let's do a little sketch. It's always good to do a little sketch of these things. So if we sketch this function here, 6x squared minus 21, we know that that's going to basically cross at negative 21 at the x-axis. And when x is negative 3, let's see what y is. When x equals negative 3, you're going to have f of g of negative 3 gives us 6 times negative 3 squared minus 21, which is 6 times 9, which is 54 minus 21, which is going to be 33. So this, when x is negative 3 over here, this is going to be like this part of the quadratic, which is going to go like this. Okay, it's going to let me make it a bit neater. Say this is 33. It's not really to scale, but it doesn't matter. It's a closed circle, and it's a quadratic that's going to be rising like this. Okay, so we can see that the range of fg of x is f of g of x is greater than or equal to 33. That's the range of this function, because the function, it stops it. It would continue like this if we could continue it, and it would be like a smiley face going up like this. But it only exists for this part where x is less than negative 3, and it goes on forever. So it's going to rise from there upwards. That's the range of f of g. Very simple, one mark, no issues there. Then it says, find an expression for the inverse of f of g x. So basically what we got to do is, the whole of f of g, x, we got to find the inverse of this. So we know f of g, x is 6x squared minus 2. Okay, so we know that f of g, x is so 6x squared minus 21, sorry. And we know that its domain is x is less than or equal to negative 3. That's what we're told. So we got to find the um, inverse of this function. So the inverse is where you call y, x and x, y. Um, so first of all, let's call it y equals 6x minus 21. Swap the x for a y and swap the y for x. And make y the subject. So you have x plus 21 equals 6y squared. So you have y squared equals x plus 21 over 6. So therefore you can have y equals, you can have plus or minus the square root of x plus 21 over 6. Now we cannot accept both of these. We have to only accept one positive or negative. Now again, as we have we've got the domain restricted to the left of the vertex, we're going to take the negative square root. So I know that y is equal to the, I know that the inverse function is going to be equal to the negative square root of x plus one, 21 over 6. Now if you want to test our answer, we can choose a value. For example, let's choose the value negative 3. We know that when I put negative 3 into the original function, you know, fg of negative 3, it gives us 33. So if I put negative 3 inside the inverse function, it should give us, if I, sorry, if I put 3 inside the, uh, 33 inside the, inside the inverse function, what should come out is negative 3. So we can see which one of these will work. All right, so when we put 3, when I, when I, when I put um, 3 inside this, let's say, say we took the positive square root, we'll have, um, 33 plus 21 over 6, that's going to give us 54 over 6, 54 over 6, okay, which gives us 9, the square root of 9 is positive 3, which is not what we want. But if we take the negative square root of it, it's going to give us, you know, the same thing, it'll be the negative square root of 9, which is negative 3. So we know it's a negative square root that we need. Okay, we could have, we, as, I, as I mentioned many times before, when you have restricted the domain for a quadratic to the left of the vertex, you choose a positive square root for the inverse. And if you have restricted the domain to the right of the vertex, then you take the positive square root. And we can see clearly here, we're going to take the negative square root for this inverse function. And we have to state its domain. Now we know that the domain of the domain 
of the inverse function is the range of the original function. So therefore, the domain is x is greater than or equal to 33, because that was the range of our, our original function. Okay, so we can say that this is the inverse function and this is its domain. And that answers this question, which is question number 10 from this paper and question number 6 from the end of topic worksheet. Okay, um, and that completes the question. Um, I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular paper May, June 2016, variant uh, 1-3, from, can be found in the playlist over here. It's from the Cambridge Pure Mathematics 19709 syllabus. Other questions from this end of topic worksheet from my P1 Cambridge Functions 2 worksheet that can be found in the playlist over here. Uh, other questions in general from functions in Cambridge uh, P1 can be found in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.